firstly, you're looking forward to the World Cup because it's a real honour for, for such a young fella. Yeah, it is, definitely. Um, don't come around a lot, four years, World Cup. and um, If I do get a gig in Melbourne, it'd be a, a dream come true, play Australia in Australia, definitely. You become a Lion, which is part of an exclusive club. Not many players get to play abroad for England or Great Britain. Uh, and the future, you are really being earmarked as a future England superstar. I know Wayne Bennett's put a lot of faith in you and other people in the group. And you, you're the youngest half of the group because I think people are really hoping that you kick on for the future and you can one day lead the team and get them around the field. Yeah, hopefully. Um, like I said, I'm still young and, and learning my trade. And there's Gailey, Kevin, Gazzy have done a lot more than me in the game. And um, it's just a pleasure for me to, to train next to me and learn stuff. 2016 were a blockbuster year for you. Had a great season. 2017. Where where do you think you what, what do you think you learned? How do you think you kicked on from last year? Because you fall a bit up and down compared to compared to 2016. What 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 did you find more difficult in 2017 compared to last year? Um, it was it was a roller coaster year for for me, like I said, and for Wigan as well. I think. We weren't performing as a team, which which obviously helps me. If, if teams play well, I play well, and um, we had a lot of injuries. And I'm not blaming everyone, everybody else, but um, yeah, I were I'm just inconsistent. Um, frustrating as a player that you just, you want to be at your best every week, and some weeks it just weren't happening for me. Because Wayne actually said you've, you you're gonna be better, you need to be better, and Wayne don't mince his words. I, I love that about him as a bloke. He's, he's brutally honest. He's really really honest and. Um, I suppose at least as a player, you know where you stand with him. Yeah, hundred percent. You'd rather you don't want to come off thinking you've had a bad game, and he, he's telling you it's all happy days, and because it's it's totally not that at all. It's um, if I've done ten good things, one bad. Trust me, the bad's coming on the review. None of me good things. So it's only going to make me better in the long run. Like I say, if I want to reach my potential and and do things in the game I dream of, um, that, that's going to make me better. Wigan is a notoriously tough environment created by Sean, and obviously. Madge before that, and, and Matty Peets takes it throughout the club. It's a real tough but great learning curve for young players, and I think we've seen the success uh, of those young players coming through the club in the last couple of years. That you know, lads are like Marshall and you know, obviously Ollie Gildart as well. There's some real talent there, but it is. It's all about the environment. It's all about that culture. Yeah, it is. It's um, it's tough to make it at Wigan as it is at every club. But like I said Matty Pete, he's, he's got the same philosophies as Wayne, you know, so it's. It's a tough pre-season um, and tough environment. You've got to you've got to want want to do it, and I think it's a good environment to be in. I've been involved with rugby five years professionally, working, running the show, and I've I've learned a lot in that time, and I've I've got to know a lot of the boys on a personal level uh, and at a professional level, and sometimes you can see something different in players. And I'd talk about players like Mickey McLaurin, like. Danny Maguire, like Jamie Jones Buchanan, as players who will literally live and die for a win. And one of them who I think is just as competitive, if not worse in some ways, is Sam Tompkins. We've seen him this year uh, come back from a career-threatening injury. I don't know if everyone knew how serious that injury was, but it was career-threatening. He's come back, and I, th I personally feel like he got better and better each week. And... I was so surprised when Zach Hardy, we're not going to talk about Zach, it's, it's a sad state of affairs and I wish him all the best, he needs some support, we're, we're there for him as always. But when Sam, Zach Hardy gets dropped because he can't play, surely you're thinking like I was thinking and most people, Sam Tompkins has got to be a shoe in for this squad. Sam's a, a massive player. He's um, We have some arguments on the field, don't get me wrong, like you said, because he's so competitive. Um, if I do something wrong, he's, he's into me. And <laughs> if I'm not passing the ball when I should have, he's into me as well. So, But yeah, he's a competitor. Um, he, he was, before he went away, he was a, probably the best fullback in the world. I thought he was unbelievable. And like you say, he's come back and had no luck at all, two bad injuries. And um, he, he was building. He, his last four or five games, I thought he was getting back to his best. And, yeah, 100%. Um, Semi final at uh, the Challenge Cup, I thought yeah. it was superb. The tackle on Regan Grace in the Saints win when he needed to win that game, he stood up. Uh, and I think that in big games, he do not drop balls. It does not drop balls. Safe as houses. It's safe as houses. And in big games, you need big players. And I'm so surprised he's not going to the World Cup. Were you surprised, honestly? Um, yeah, I, 
I, I don't pick the team, so it's not up to me. But um, his experience is um, is massive, and um, like you say, his world to wins next level. You have got a great squad around you, even without Tompkins, without Stevie Ward, um, Wayne's. He can't debate with Wayne Bennett. He's, he's won it all, done it all, been there. The squad he's taking is the squad he wants, and it's a squad that he thinks can lift the World Cup for England. When you look around the squad, there's some real talent there, some real hope for England. Yeah, there is definitely, and there's some some new faces as well. Ben Curry, he's not, he's not played for for England yet. Um, he's a, a massive talent. He's quick. Yeah, he's quick. He's quick. For a big bloke, he's pretty quick. I wouldn't fancy catching him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, people like him, my mate Mika, had a go in some more, and it's good to see people around my age. It's pretty good to see them in the same team. This this World Cup, obviously, it's about winning it right now, but. Looking ahead to 2021, we we don't want to look too far ahead because obviously we're in 2017, but we've got to succession plan, we've got to plan for the future. Like you mentioned there, there's some real good characters of a certain age that are going to be around in 2021, big part players, and hopefully you're going to be a big part of that. It's exciting for the future, it's exciting for England. Yeah, it is massive. We had a, a man speak before, he said, average age is 25, so it's, it's not all at all. And I think me, Mark Percival, John Bateman, Ben Curry, the list goes on it. We're all 22, 23, and when that next one comes, we'll be 26, 27 with um, a lot more experience.